I've seen a lot of hype on a new solar revolution brought about by mounting bifacial panels vertically, but this seems counterintuitive. Can these vertical east-west oriented panels really outperform those open rack mounted south facing panels? It doesn't seem likely. Rather than just reading a bunch of articles on the topic, I'm testing it myself. I wanted to know what the average Joe, or in my case, the everyday Dave, would expect to see in real world conditions. Welcome back to Projects with Everyday Dave. It's time for a first peek at the winter results using some real data. Over the past couple of years, I've done some back-to-back -back testing that shows some amazing advantages of using bifacial solar panels. Bifacial panels have the ability to collect solar energy from both sides of the panel, which opens up a whole new world of possibilities. One of those is vertically mounted panels. For my testing, the back side of the panel can collect at most about 50% of what the front side of the panel can collect. So the strategy with these vertically mounted panels is to face half of the panels with the primary side facing east and half of the panels with the primary side facing west. That way you get an even distribution throughout the entire day, except for a dip right at solar noon, because as you can see, when the sun tracks through the sky at noon, it's gonna be hitting the edge of these panels and nothing will be hitting the faces except for the reflected sun around it. You can see how bifacial panels perform back to back with standard panels on an open array on a roof or in the snow from my previous videos linked in the description below or on my website, projectswithdave.com. One of the biggest promises of vertical mounted panels is the ability to use the same land to both harvest the sun's power and produce crops. Not only that, but supposedly it creates a better power profile by picking up energy early in the morning and lasting later into the day. But is this really the solar panacea people are claiming it is? To test this theory, I devised my own back-to-back -back test with these vertical mounted panels and those traditionally mounted panels to prove it out in real world conditions. There's not a lot of racking solutions for vertically oriented panels yet, so I made my own. SWI Fence Company makes these aluminum I-beams that they use for fence posts by pounding them into the ground. And they were kind enough to give me a few to try out for my test fixture. These posts are narrow, but strong, limiting the shading that the panels see from the mounting structure. I didn't have a fence post pounder that fit over these posts, so I used my tractor to push them into the ground and kind of pound them into the soil. I went with vertical orientation for these panels instead of of two horizontal orientations because of the limited height of these posts. But I think SWI can make these posts as long as needed if they turn out to be a good way to mount solar panels. These posts are pounded about two feet or so into the ground and I've seen 60 mile an hour winds already and they seem to hold up just fine. They aren't super stiff so I can push on them and bounce the panels around a little bit but they're plenty strong. They aren't going to blow over. I set the panels just inside the I-beam channel and mounted them with these standard Renogy solar panel mounting brackets which I'll link to in the description if you want to try. These allowed me to set the primary side of the panel flush with the beams and the back side a little bit offset. And that's going to optimize the performance by limiting the shading that the I-beam causes on the primary side of the panel. I routed the wires around the edges of the panel so they wouldn't provide any additional shading. And I'm using individual Solar Edge DC-DC optimizers, one for each of the vertical panels. That will allow me to measure the performance of each panel at the panel level without being impacted by losses between here and the inverter. I'm also using Using optimizers on the main array for the bifacial and standard panels, so I have a measurement at the panel level for every one of the panels. I've only been collecting data for a few months, but it was so interesting that I wanted to give you an early first look at the data. We're going to look at the performance under the following winter conditions, all of which are very near the winter solstice. And I'm going to save the most interesting result for last. Then we'll go over the practical application of these results and how it might impact what you want to do with your solar system. Today's data is going to provide the results for the following conditions. A fully sunny day with no snow on the ground, a mostly cloudy day with no snow on the ground, a mostly cloudy day with snow on the ground, a mostly sunny day with snow on the ground, and a partly sunny day with snow on the panels themselves. Don't be fooled, there is no free lunch, but with some creativity and a little knowledge, you can optimize the best solution for your actual situation. These results give some astounding differences in performance that depend dramatically on weather conditions. There's a lot of data to show, and I don't want to spend too much time on each chart, so feel free to pause the charts and take a minute to absorb them if needed. This chart shows the power output of these 395 watt panels at each hour of the day. You see two typical performance curves. The top blue parabola is an average of the bifacial panels mounted at 30 degrees on the main array. 
The orange parabola right below it is the standard panels on the main array, and they're slightly underperforming the bifacial panels, which is what you would expect to see if you've watched my other videos on the back-to-back -back performance. Then, the more interesting green and light blue curves are the vertical east-west facing panels. Right away, you can see, even in the winter, when the sun is in the least beneficial position for these panels, they are producing more power earlier in the day and later in the evening. It's not perfectly symmetrical because there's some slight shading that happens late in the day from the west side. The first thing I want to do is merge the results of the east and west panels together to produce the typical V-curve that you would expect to see from a vertical array. This assumes that you will face half of your panels east and half of your panels west. Now, it's pretty much obvious at this point that the vertical panels are not producing as much as the south-facing panels. Hmm, no big surprise there. Adding this bar graph, you can see the full day production for each panel in watt hours. If I set the main array bifacial panels as the performance standard at 100% of the expected output for the day, you can see the standard panels fall below that at 93% of the max, and the bifacial vertical panels produce a very disappointing 63% of the max for that day. Now, I'm guessing when we hit the winter solstice, this will look very different. But the reality is, winter is when I need the most production. So this isn't helping the case for vertical panels. But don't stop watching yet, because the data gets a lot more interesting. Before we leave this typical winter sunny day scenario, let's look at one possible adjustment. Here I've added this light blue curve, which represents a combo approach. For example, if you installed 10 vertical panels facing east, 10 vertical panels facing west, and 10 panels at 30 degrees facing south, you can pull the dip up out of the middle and get almost an ideal result that would likely eliminate any clipping from the inverter. So even though the output on the bar graph shows this scenario only achieving 75% of the max, if I was using a a typical undersized inverter, the top of the south facing curve would be clipped off and the result would be actually a lot closer. Now let's look at a cloudy day with no snow. The curves are a little bit lumpy because the cloud cover varies throughout the day. Right away, you notice something very interesting. There's no dip midday. That's pretty neat. Because there is no direct sunlight, the albedo or reflected light from the surroundings is providing the majority of the power. However, even in this condition, the south facing panels outperform and we don't see any early morning or late evening benefit like we do on sunny days. We did move from 63% to 77%, so that's something, I guess. But wait, the next result is even more interesting. This is a cloudy day, but with snow on the ground, which dramatically increases the albedo effect seen by the panels. Finally, the vertical bifacial panels are outperforming the standard south-facing panels. Another thing to notice here is the south-facing bifacial panels are getting a significant boost from the backside reflection. This results in a much more significant performance boost over the regular panels. You can see from the bar graph, the standard panels are only producing 88% of the max possible output for the day. And that's only slightly less than the 89% from the vertical panels. It's results like these that should convince you to use bifacial panels for your solar install. If I were installing solar panels today, I would be using some type of ground mount with bifacial panels hands down. They outperform standard panels in every condition, and they have their best performance in cloudy and snowy conditions when you need the extra boost the most. I've listed the best resources I have found for bifacial and standard solar panels. You can find the links in the description below or on my website, projectswithdave.com, under the Solar Panels tab. Some of these are affiliate links, and since there's no sponsor for this video, you can help out my channel just a little bit at no cost to you by using those links if you plan to make a purchase. Thank you. This graph represents a mostly sunny day with snow on the ground. Unfortunately, due to our record number of cloudy days in a row, I didn't have a perfect sunny day with snow, but this is the closest I could provide. Once again, you can see the outstanding performance of the south-facing bifacial panels. The vertical array looks a little weak, but from the bar graph, you can see that the day's production was 93% of the possible max. A couple of things to note here. There is no significant cloud cover, and yet, there's no midday dip in the vertical array. This is pretty amazing and leads to some very interesting solutions, even if you don't get snow. There's something very unique about the shading of the vertical array. You can see mid-morning, the main array shades the surface behind itself, minimizing the reflection to the backside 
which isn't so different from the vertical array, which also casts a shadow behind them in the morning and in the evening. However, when you get to solar noon or close to it, you see a dramatic difference. The reflection back to the main array is completely and directly shaded, but the vertical array casts almost no shadow since the sun is only hitting the very edge of the panels. The result is all the sun from both sides can be reflected back to the panels. If you were planning a vertical array and didn't need to use the surrounding soil for farming, you could use a reflective surface like white rock to minimize your midday dip without adding any south-facing panels. That's pretty neat. Now, I grew up in Alaska, so this final and most dramatic result is very interesting to me. There's a large solar farm that I visited in Alaska, and it's pretty easy to see the snow cover will dramatically impact its performance. No one is clearing off the panels when it snows, and I can tell you it snows a lot in Alaska. Finally, here it is. The vertical array far outperforms the south-facing array, and that's because the south-facing array is covered in snow. You can tell by the output this wasn't a super sunny day, but it gets the point across, and I have data from multiple similar days, and I get just about the same result every time. On this graph, you can see the standard panels perform very poorly, maxing out at about 13 watts per panel and producing only 71 watt hours for the day which actually is pretty amazing that they produce anything at all. The bifacial panels pick up some backside reflection and produce a respectable 207 watt hours for the day. The vertical panels blow them away at 401 watt hours, and that's without a whole lot of sun. Now, they were only limited by the fact that it wasn't very sunny. Since there was no snow on them, their full potential was available. If we zoom in on the full day performance chart, you can see that the 30 degree mounted bifacials outperform the standard panels by almost three times the output. The vertical panels beat the standard panels with 5.6 times the output, and they beat the snow-covered panels by almost two times the output. Now let's compare all the days side by side. Unfortunately, due to the lack of sun this winter, my days with snow are not as high output as I would like but I think the results are scalable. I can draw a couple of quick conclusions from this chart. If you don't live in the north or need to farm between fence rows or need off-peak hour benefits, a standard south-facing array would make the most sense. If you need to maximize morning and evening production or live in a place with a lot of snow or clouds, vertical mounted panels may be a great option for you. One thing to consider, however, there are not a lot of racking systems on the market for mounting panels vertically at this time. As I become aware of more, I'll list them on my website, projectswithdave.com. Let's look at the whole month of January for each option. The performance on the individual days matters, so you can understand and extrapolate for the weather in your area. For my January, which only had snow on the ground for three or four days, the combined output gives us 79% of the bifacials on the main array. Interestingly, only 7% less than the standard panels put out. I have to say that's better than I expected, but it's still not as good as a regular south-facing array. We had a record 26 days with no sun where I live here in Ohio, so the performance of panels on cloudy days does matter. I'll continue to take data through the summer solstice to understand the full year comparison between the two installation methods. Meanwhile, you can check out some of the other videos I've done evaluating bifacial performance here and in the description below. How much more power can you expect to get from bifacial panels? What happens if you install them on the roof? What's the most power you can expect to get from the backside? I answer all of these questions and more, so check them out, and I'll see you next time.